So Keir Starmer and Ed Millipede, uh, Miliband have <laughs> excitedly lauded the introduction of carbon capture usage and storage technology this week. But is he really putting the country first by committing nearly 22 billion quid? Remember, that was the size of the black hole. Well, they've filled it with carbon <laughs> <laughs> towards this Labour Green Energy project. The same amount, I repeat, as that infamous black hole. Where have they found the money? Is the carbon capture package a load of net zero, hot air, seconds out, it's round one. That's a little preview of my view, so I'm going to let Kai take it away. Ding, ding. Well, it wouldn't be a mudslinging <coughs> match, would it, on the Saturday Five without having a bit of a jab with Darren on green energy and net zero. Now, my view on this is pretty simple. I think if we're trying to hold this back, if we think that we can, we can lag and stop our responsibilities when it comes to net zero compared to other countries, then that's a joke. And frankly, this kind of package is the best way for us to be going about this business. Now, this is a £22 billion investment package. Now, what you won't hear, of course, is it's over the next 25 years. So, really, I'm going to be arguing that maybe it should be a bit higher than that. And I'll tell you for why. Taken with Great British Energy and the National Wealth Fund that are also being rolled out, I think this is exactly the kind of package of measures that will support different parts of the country, many of which have de-industrialised in the last few decades, will support them into a new industrial future. Now, only last year, the whiz kids over at Silicon Valley invested $17.7 billion in this technology alone. Now, I think that speaks for itself, but if that's not quite enough, big business, big industrials, cement manufacturers and so on are all piling in on this and are expected also to invest an additional £8 billion to that 22, at least, over the course of that agreement. Now, all of this, again, you won't hear how many jobs are going to be created, at least 4,000 directly and 50,000 indirectly, and that doesn't even cover the, the other programmes that are going to be announced over the next few months, I'm sure, in this new drive of investment. This isn't hot air, this isn't money into thin air, it's putting jobs right where we need them in the UK and replacing some of the industries that, sadly, in the past few years, we've seen decimated by the Conservative government. But uh, before I answer all of those substantive points, would you answer the question of this money, why take it away? You mentioned it's over a, a period of a, a quarter of a century. Well, hang on, the pension is getting payments. You know, that would have been going on for quite some time. They said there wasn't enough money in the coffers for that. Where are they finding the funding for this measure? Creating infrastructure, building infrastructure, making investment is a different thing entirely from deciding where the, where the budget is being spent. Now, allocating those amounts comes completely separately no. to deciding where the future infrastructure no. investment is going to come I'll from. I'll tell you what and working, and working, I can't believe that you're on the side of Greenpeace on this. I'm not sure if you've joined Just Stop Oil, but they're actually one of the only groups that are opposing this. You've got big business, big tech, all coming in on this. Yes, the technology can be flawed, no, hang on, but we right, need to throw on, the Chance, think on have this. Chance. Right. <laughs> there are the points you make on big business saying they're all up for this. Well, I wonder why that might be. Could it be because they're being given a bung in the form of taxpayer cash to actually swallow and gobble all of this up, like the rest of the green investment that we've ploughed into these big businesses over the past since 2008 when Ed Miliband put in place the Climate Change Act? By the way, that government put in place these kinds of measures. They explored, they set up an exploration of carbon capture technology. And it was determined that the subsidy would be so large that you could never, ever make it market friendly. It could never work because the subsidy to the taxpayer would be so expensive that it simply wasn't worth Doing. What we have done, though, in the interim is said, you speak to us about jobs. Tell that to the people who have just lost their jobs in steelmaking. Tell that to the people in North Sea oil and gas who've just lost their jobs and in the wider supply chain, where we are no longer actually sourcing our own oil and gas and our coal <coughs> manufacturing as well. 
Coal we still need, by the way, for your great big whopping subsidised wind farms that we can no longer get in this country. We'll have to get it from Russia and Australia. Well, guess what? That's one hell of a lot of carbon emissions, much more than little old Doris freezing in her home because she can't afford her gas bill, thanks to what you people have actually done to this economy and to our country. You have sacrificed the working class on the altar of greenery, Greta Thunberg-esque, and on big business who's growing fat on taxpayer money. I think it's a damn disgrace, and I think, yet yeah, this is more example of big business getting fat on all this stuff. I can't believe a Marxist like you is talking about <laughs> the fact that this is good for big business. You should be on the side of the little people. That's whose side I'm on, net zero ain't. It's on the side of big fat cats and vested interests. Exactly. I won't take any of this from you, right? The last time I talked to a real coal miner who was still mining was two weeks ago. The last time I talked to a farmer was two days ago. And I'll tell you what, they don't have petty grievances about net zero, taking up all this cash, you know, losing out on all the spending that we would be getting otherwise. They're worried about the state of their industries, British industries, farming, steel making, you mentioned, you know, this worried about what happens after those industries slowly, you know, become less relevant. And they know that they'll become and less coming, relevant. But what they want relevant is a plan. Policy decisions a plan, that have made. The, no, and this a, is yeah, a plan. It's a net zero plan that green elites and the Davos set, which the Keir Starmer says he pre prefers over Westminster, and that'll be because there is power removed from the very people that you speak of, mm. the people that yeah. are being phased out, that's farmers, that's steel workers, anyone in energy intensive industries, Nissan in Sunderland, you are saying to them their future is not in these industries in this country. And no, I think not that at all. you're supposed to be on no. the side of labour in this country, you're on the side of big money and vested interests, and I think that's no. a fine shame. What is needed in these industries, We're have unlike... To Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter? Well, send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed.